If Peter hadn't triumphed in his position as chief clinician, what do you think he'd be doing now and why? Hmm. I would say after his stand-up to cancer performance a few years ago, he would have to be a stand-up comedian. He might well have been an actor in a different life, and if he was, who might he have been? And I find myself thinking about a suave, sophisticated James Bond character maybe, a bit more, um, a bit more Sean Connery perhaps than Daniel Craig. He'd be on welfare state. Well, you know, you've worked with him, and who'd employ him? Um, I think Peter rather fancies himself as um, the next James Bond, so I think Peter would probably be an actor, but he'd probably swap his martini for a Dubonnet. <clears throat> Having witnessed his absolutely outstanding performance at the uh, Director's Comedy Night for Stand Up To Cancer a couple of years ago, I think absolutely stand-up comedian. I think that's his second calling. I think it would have to be a masseur because it would be such a shame for his great bedside manner to go to waste. He'd be a dancer, of course. I haven't seen the footage myself, but I've heard lots about the tutu, the footlights, a natural calling. If Peter became Prime Minister tomorrow, what do you think the first law that he would pass would be? Oh, free drugs, definitely. Of the medical kind, of course. We ban politicians from making any kind of judgment or decision on policy for science or medicine as his first act. Well, my experience with Peter is he hates legal agreements. He thinks they get in the way of doing great science and I have to agree with him on that point. So actually, I think if he was Prime Minister, one of the first things he'd do is not pass any new laws because they require legal agreements. So I would say pass fewer laws. Ban all celebrities and all reality TV shows. Pims at three o'clock. Knowing his favourite tipple, I think he'd probably have to abolish the tax on Dubonnet. Need primary legislation, but compulsory Chaucer in the national curriculum, particularly for those with a scientific bent. Peter gives such wonderful scientific presentations, uh, peppered with literary references. We need the next generation of scientists to be doing the same. Peter can have dinner with anyone, alive or dead. Who do you think it would be? Well, I just can't think of anybody Peter would want to have dinner with other than his fabulous EB colleagues. The Queen? or Jeremy Clarkson. The Queen to carry on the conversation after the presentation of Peter's CBE. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, Peter is uh, the politest man I know. I assume from what I read Jeremy Clarkson is the rudest and I think Peter could give Jeremy a lesson in uh, etiquette. Why? Um, I think he could probably have a really good evening with Jeremy Hunt because it would give him lots of opportunities to uh, basically tell him what's wrong with the NHS and what's wrong with our system in the UK and maybe try and sort a few things out. I don't think it'll be a fun evening, but I think it will be really interesting. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Uh, anyone from Love Island? Well, I wouldn't want to have a dinner with somebody who's dead. There wouldn't be much point in that. But no, if he had somebody who was alive, I think it would probably be Jeremy Hunt. So he could give him a piece of his mind. But then actually, I'm not sure whether Jeremy Hunt does have a beating heart, so there we are. I think if Peter could have dinner with anyone, it would be with the entire Kardashian family, so that he could tell them what he really thinks about the role of celebrities in modern day society. Hey Peter, uh, just going to miss you. You are charming, great sense of humour, caring, a really very, very modest person, and you are so helpful. And it was one time particularly when a very good friend of mine was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and you put him in touch with a great expert and that helped put his mind at rest. He didn't have to do that, he did it very quickly and quietly, and I think that just sums you up as a lovely man. Gonna miss you, thank you. Peter, it's been a real pleasure to work alongside you over the last few years. I've appreciated your insights, your guidance, and your support. Um, and I wish you all the best in your new role. I've worked with Peter for um, quite closely for three or four years now um, and I guess just my reflections on that time would be um, he's a total pro. Um, I think we've agreed and disagreed on many things over the years um, and I've learnt a huge am amount from Peter. I very much enjoyed working with him um, and I guess I'd just like to finish by saying thank you very much for all his hard work and his contributions to CRUK. We wish him luck um, in his new role. Peter, thank you so much for your support over the last few years, from myself, from the team, from our supporters. 
You've been an absolutely brilliant champion of our fundraising, particularly with the Catalyst Club, and you've only exploded twice in EB at my presentations, which I gather is a really good hit rate. You've been a great help and font of knowledge for our supporters, most recently with Margaret and Tony, who really appreciated your help. You'll be much missed by us all, but luckily we know where you are, so you'll be hearing from us very soon. It's been such a pleasure working with Peter, the whole of p and uh, particularly the press and comms teams have Peter on speed dial. What on earth are we going to do without you? Um, thanks for all you've done for us and good luck. <laughs>